we all have a, a lesson? Amen? And we want to say a pleasant good evening to those who are viewing us on via live stream. And we hope and pray that you had a wonderful day and God's richest blessings were upon you. We want to thank you for joining us. And we pray as we open God's word tonight that you will be blessed by this evening's study. And if you are desirous of having this evening's um, this, this handout, please go to our website at theacreagesda.com and fill out that little request box and we'll do our best to send these lessons to you via email. We, have, uh, we are continuing our series on the subject matter Christ for the crisis. And we have chosen an appropriate text, Proverbs 27, verse 12. It says what? A prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and they are punished. Wise words from the wise man, and we are told in volume 8 of the testimonies, Page 28, Mrs. White says, We who know the truth, we should be preparing for what is soon to break upon the world as an overwhelming surprise. You know, um, um, we see what is happening even in our little society today. A little, hur little hurricane is coming through. And you can't get any water. You can't get any gas. And you can't get any light. And, you know, the Bible says, uh, Had the children of darkness become more wiser than those who profess light. And we believe a greater storm is coming. Relentless in his fury, Ellen White says. And we need to now be preparing for what is soon to overtake the world as an overwhelming surprise. And we have discussed that what takes the wicked by surprise should not take us by surprise because we are the children of light. And Jesus was never taken by surprise. And tonight our prayer should be, Lord, hold, hold, Hold the winds until you have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads until we have gotten ourselves together uh, spiritually and also physically. Amen? When I was young, I was told that procrastination is a thief of what? Do you believe that? And as it was to yesterday, it is the same today. We're also told in the lieu of the coming crisis, if we do not now act, we will be forced to react. And God has given us ample warnings, um, instructions in the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy, how we are to prepare ourselves for the last great struggle in Earth's history. There is a physical preparation that needs to be done, but there is also a spiritual preparation. And what the devil has done in, in many of our churches he has caused us now to maximize the minor and minimize the major. And so we hear nothing about this upcoming crisis. Uh, we hear a sound bite now and then. And those who seek to warn uh, the people are dubbed fanatics, enthusiast, enthusiasts, and um, we are labeled and by all kind of ignominious title. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King is a man whom I greatly um, respect um, um, for his life and what he did, knowing what his end would be. And Dr. King wrote this about time. He said, we may cry out desperately for time to pause in her passage, but time is adamant, adamant to every plea and rushes on. Time waits for no man. It does not pause. It rushes on. It is adamant to every plea. We realize that the national Sunday law will be a defining moment in our Christianity. Amen. And we see what is happening in the world. And I believe that this administration, will, will, if not usher in the Sunday law, will bring us one step closer to it. I believe every president who has taken an office has an agenda. And they have been used um, to bring this to a reality. And tonight we're going to take a look at a lesson that is very controversial in our church. It's called Perfection in Christ Jesus. There are those who believe that we cannot become perfect. And so tonight's lesson, lesson number 18, is Perfection in Christ Jesus. 
John 14, 30, the, the Bible says this hereafter. Christ is speaking now. I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath what? And hath nothing in me. Ellen White comments on this text, and she puts it in the coming crisis. And Sister Dennis, please read what we have in great controversy, the first paragraph in your handout. Satan could find nothing in the Son of God that would enable him to gain the victory. He had kept his father's commandments, and there was no sin in him that Satan could use to his advantage. This is the condition in which those must be found who shall stand in the time of trouble. Did you get that? So what condition must we be in if we plan to stand successfully in the little time of trouble? And she didn't, she didn't even qualify. She just says time of trouble. And there are two times of trouble. What condition must we be in? No sin. No sin. Is that clear? Yes. So my brothers and sisters, if we plan to survive the little time of trouble and the great time of trouble, we are admonished that there cannot be any sin in us. In, 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 in us. And if there is sin, we will be overcome by this, this crisis. Question number one now says, now what did Jesus admonish his followers to do? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, the Bible says in Matthew 5, 48, Jesus now says now, now be ye therefore what? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So we are admonished to attain uh, to attain perfection now, to attain perfection of character. Not in the other life, but in this life. And if we plan to stand successfully in the little time of trouble and the great time of trouble, we are told we're going to have to be perfect. Not in our own strength, but we must attain perfection of character in Christ Jesus. So then please read that manuscript 148, 1902, she says. Christ presents before us the highest perfection of Christian character, which throughout our lifetime we should aim to reach. Mm -hmm. Be therefore perfect, he says, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Concerning this perfection, Paul writes, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. So is perfection something that, that's happened instantaneously? She says, in our lifetime, look at, these, look, look, at these, look at these buzzwords. In our lifetime, three score and ten by the reason of strength. So God has given us time to, to attain to perfection of character. And Paul says, I follow after it. Yes. So it is a growth. Yes. Look at these compelling statements she reads. Um, Sons and of God, page 155. Please, students, please read. With our limited powers, we are to be as holy as in our sphere as God is holy in his sphere. All right. One more reference. Our work is to strive to attain in our sphere of action the perfection that Christ in his life on the earth attained in every phase of character. So these statements are telling us it is, it is possible for us to become perfect in character. In whose sphere? In our sphere. Our sphere. Now, the word sphere also means order of society, social position, or class, as Webster defines the word. And in the sense, man in his human nature or his sphere advance from one phase or rank or grade or class or stage of perfection to a what? So it is actually a growth. Yes, now let me ask you a question. You look at this, this diagram here. Is this flower perfect in, in each sphere? Yes. It is. It is. I mean, because it, 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 it can't go no more perfect here. Each stage, it is perfect. And so as we matriculate through Christianity, whatever sphere we find ourselves in, God expects us to become perfect in that sphere. And it is Satan's plan to have us believe that we cannot become perfect in Christ Jesus and this is what the new theology has, 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 has brought into our churches and so the, 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 the tendency now or the tenant is now we will be sinning until Jesus comes oh Lord have mercy upon me we will be sinning we will be sinning until, until Jesus until Jesus comes and that is not true Question number two now says, now according to Jude, 
What is God able to prevent the Christian from doing, not at some times, but at all times? Now we quote these texts as benediction, but do we really believe it? Jude 1, 24, the Bible says now, Now unto him that is able to keep you or me from falling and present us what? Faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding what? So Jude is saying that God, and it's not, not, not a benediction. This is a promise that we need. We oftentimes use this text as we're leaving the, the, the congregation, you know. But it is a promise. Jude says God is able to keep them from falling. And this falling means keep us from committing known sin. That is what the text is saying. God is able and willing to keep us from falling. Christ says, be therefore perfect. Jude says that God is able to keep us from falling. That is to keep us from committing known sins. Isn't that right? Yes. Number three now says, now, does, the Lord, does the Lord intend that by his grace that we shall live a life here and now which is free from sin? Some think that we will be free from sin when we get to the other side. Do the best you can right now. And we oftentimes hear this cliche, God knows my heart or Jesus understands. What does the Bible say? Romans chapter 6, 11, Paul says now, be then made what? Free from sin. Ye become the servants of what? When Paul wrote this state, he was not in an immortal state. He was in a mortal state. And Paul can say now that God is able to, to, to make us free from sin. Romans chapter 16 verse 4. He, occurs, he echoes the same sentiments, uh, sentiments. Verse 14 says. Now we know this text. He says. For sin shall not have what? Have dominion or ruler over you. For you are not under law. But under what? So it is possible for us to have dominion over sin. And not sin have dominion over us. So the answer is yes. God expects us. To be free from sin while we are in this sphere, while we're in this life. And again, if we plan to successfully weather the little time of trouble and the great time of trouble, we must be in a condition that Christ was in. When the devil came, he found no sin in him. Free from sin means free from the power of, of a corrupt heart, vain thoughts, sinful words, Sinful action altogether, free from the what? The damning, the damning, the, uh, what? Damning. damning power of sin. That's what Paul says that sin shall have dominion over us, or we are free, free from sin. Is that right? Now, um, question number three now says now, right? All right. Okay, let's read those references, Sister, sister um, Venice. We can overcome, yes, fully. Entirely, Jesus died to make a way of escape for us that we might overcome every evil temper, every sin, every temptation, and sit down at last with him. So the answer is yes, virgin, we can overcome. And you have to tell yourself that we, and we must overcome. Amen. You know, uh, during the civil rights, there was a theme, they sung, we shall overcome. And they did overcome and got there and got their, their their rights right so we shall overcome and must overcome fully not just partially but fully in every aspect of our lives the next reference please B. christ died to make it possible for you to cease from sin. there it is cease christ has made it possible for every one of us to cease from sin and i'm going to tell you something if we plan to to to, to make it we have to become the mindset before the Son of Law passes. Amen. Because remember, character is not developed in a crisis. Amen. Character is revealed in a crisis. Look what she says now, see? If you will stand under the bloodstained banner of Prince Emmanuel, faithfully doing his service, you need never yield to temptation. Mm -hmm. For one stands by your side who is able to keep you from falling. There it is. Over and over in the spirit of prophecy, she echoes the same sentiment that God is able to keep you from falling. We can't stop temptation from, as, as, as one, one say, 
we can't stop the bird from flying over your head, but you can stop the bird from making a nest in your head. And we cannot stop temptation, but we don't have to yield to temptation, right? D, look what she says now. There is what? No excuse? There is no excuse for sinning. A holy temper, a Christ-like life is accessible to every repenting, believing child of God. So there's no excuse for sinning. There's nothing you can give that will justify you or justify your sinful action. There is none. No excuse for sinning, right? E? His life testifies that it is possible for us also to obey the law of God. Wow. Again, we can. And isn't it amazing? When we go out, we tell our brethren in the Sunday churches that we can, we, want, we are the commandment keeping people. Isn't that right? But then we tell ourselves that we can't keep the commandments of God. That's an oxymoron. Now, are we commandment keeping people or are we not? Or we must mean we just keep the Sabbath. That's only one of the ten. And all ten are important. So we tell them that, oh, you've got you to keep the commandments of God. And then we tell our own people that they cannot keep the commandments of God. F, this is a powerful quotation. Go ahead now. So this is the strongest. What, I have for you. what do you have? This, I have not even by a thought did he yield to temptation. Okay, I'm sorry. There it is. There it is now. Please read it. F. Not even by a thought did he yield to temptation. So it may be with us. Wow. So not even by a thought did what? Not even by a thought did he yield to temptation. Now I think I have a, a, a typo, but it's, it's on the screen. Please read this one. This is a, this is a powerful one now. Um, that the strongest bulwark on the screen. The strongest temptation is no excuse for sin. However great the pressure brought to bear upon the soul, transgression is our own act. It is not in the power of the earth or hell to compel anyone to sin. The will must consent. The heart must yield. Our passion cannot overbear reason nor iniquity triumph over righteousness. No, 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 let, let's just tarry there. I mean, we could just shut it down and just discuss that. That is such a loaded, loaded paragraph. She says, the strongest temptation is no excuse to sin. However great the pressure brought, up, brought to bear upon the soul, transgression is what? It's a choice. Then she says, now, it is not in the power of earth or hell to compel any to sin. There's no demon alive that can make you sin. Amen. The devil can put you to the edge, but he can't push you. Amen. You must jump. He can't push you. That's why he told Jesus, if thou will, cast thyself. Why did he push him down? Because he couldn't. Look what she says now. She says the will, and the will is the power of choice. The will must consent. The heart must yield. Or passion cannot over, override reason, nor iniquity triumph over righteousness. So when we sin, it is a choice. No one made you sin. The devil can create the environment and situation, but again, sin is by man's own choice. Is that right? Yeah. Now, question number four now says now, how holy or righteous are we at birth? Let's discuss these texts now as we look, look at the, the context of perfection in Christ Jesus. How holy or righteous are we at birth? Look at these texts. Job 14 verse 4. Job says, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Who can do that? And that which is crooked cannot be made straight. That which is wanting can never be numbered. Who can bring a clean thing? Out of an unclean thing. And we're all undone, you know that. Some people think that when a baby is born, oh, that baby is so... You give him time and space. And you'll see what will happen. Psalms 51 verse 5, David says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And just in case we don't get it, consider Psalms 58 verse 3. David says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. 
speaking. That's us. That's all of us. Who came out of their mother's womb holy? We go astray as soon as we are born. Speaking lies. You don't have to teach your children to lie. Who took that school? Who took that course in, in, in class? Lying 101. <laughs> or stealing 202. No, no, those things are, are natural. Yes. So it's not that we are born sinners, but we are born with a nature that will sin. Yes. If you give that baby time and space, it will sin. Right? Look what she says in 5 Bible Commentary 1128. Sit so in, please read now. Adam was created a pure, sinless being. Without a taint of sin upon him, he was in the image of God. Uh -huh. He could fall, and he did fall through transgressing. Here it is now. Because of sin, his posterity was born with the inherent propensities of disobedience. There it is. And that is why we are condemned. Not because we are sin sinners, but because the nature, this, this propensity, we will care because there is no keeping power at birth. Is when we're born again now, we get that power to restrain and constrain these propensities. But again, we are born with the inherent propensities of disobedience. And the text says, let's look at the text again, what it says now. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. Not truth. We speak lies. As a matter of fact... You know, we have a little, you know, as we, we're exiting the house, my wife, you know, is always buying stuff and she, she bought a little stool where they, they could sit on to put their shoes on. Now, we have a mirror in the house and I, I clean all the mirrors. I take pride in cleaning mirrors, Sister Dennis. All right, every mirror in the house I clean and I do, I do a pretty good job, Amen. right? Now, when I came back, I noticed there were some handprints in the, in the mirror. And I put my hand, it was, it was a little baby hand. So this morning I'm putting on nature. I said, Nate, let me ask you a question. Did you touch the glass? No. I said, no, 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 no. I said, don't lie to me. You're the only hand in the house that's so small. <laughs> then he, he was caught now. Busted. Look at that. This poor little old Nate. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Speaking lies. <laughs> it's the nature. That's why they, we've got to be born again. We've got to be born again, right? Now, question number five says now, do some people, do some people have more to overcome than others due to hereditary and, and environmental factors? Yes. Look at Romans chapter 16, verse 9. This is a powerful text in the Bible. We, we don't hear this text being quoted too much, but focus on the latter verses. Romans 16, verse 9, and Paul says, 6, thank you. 6 verse 19. It's a typo on the screen. It says now, Paul says now, for your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad thereof on your behalf. But yet, I would have you wise unto that which is good. And do what? And simple concerning evil. Paul is saying, the less evil you know is the what? Why? Because you're going to meet your Waterloo. You're going to have to overcome these things. That which we have exposed ourselves to at our youth, they, it will come back to haunt us. So I see, and Paul is saying, you need a mic, Ella. Paul is saying, the, the, uh, the less evil you know, it is the better for you. Why? Because you expose yourself to it. Guess what now? You're going to have to Seek to overcome these things which you have exposed yourself to. Go ahead, um, Elder Dennis. I remember you know, one time I had this experience when I was out in the world, um, going to parties and all of that, dancing and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, I used to go with a crew, mm -hmm. named the famous crew, so we were very famous. Mm -hmm. And majority of those guys were smoking, so smoke, uh, smoking let you look cool and you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and girls love that mm -hmm. thing. so one day I, I said I'm going to take up the smoking and follow these guys and when I put it in my mouth the spirit came to me and said you, you said that you are going back to 
going back to church one of these days. Mm -hmm. When you develop this problem, how are you gonna eat? How how are you going to be able to take care of it when you go to church? Mm -hmm. How are you going to easily overcome these things when you develop these habits? Mm -hmm. And I just throw it away immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're right. And, 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 and that's what she's... And, and, and look what... Look what um, so exactly. And again, this speaks to parents. Environment. You, you know what we talk about? Oh, you shelter your children. They, 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 they're going to turn girlish. No, you know they're not. The less your kids know, the better for them. Amen. People talk about, you need to expose them so that they could develop, you know, when a, when a person's going over, over, over the arm, my buddy of mine, he went to Africa, and he said, no, nah, man, I had to get some vaccination. Now, they in, inject a, a virus in you so you can be resilient to what, what, what you're getting. So people are saying, well, you know what? Just expose them to the sin. So when they grow up, they'll know how to handle themselves. Haven't you heard that reasoning? That's of the devil. It is diabolical. Yes. Even in the church, they tell you that. Yes, you know, well, you, 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 you shelter your kids them. You need to shelter them. Yes. Send them to church. Because listen, the more you expose them to, it will come back to haunt them. Yes. They're going to have to overcome these things. So it's not just, and, 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 and Apostle Paul says, we should be simple concerning evil. The less you know, the better for you. Amen. But what, all the good you can, learn it. All the evil stuff, keep it from yourself because again, it will come back to haunt you. Ella Woodbine, you need a, you need a mic. Um, please. I, I want to understand. I see some children in church mm -hmm. and the things I see them doing which is really disgusting to me. Mm -hmm. And their parents sit down beside them and see them carrying on and say nothing and do nothing. Mm -hmm. And then when you talk to them, they say, oh, they will grow it out. Mm -hmm. how, how do we understand something like that? And why do parents think that children will grow out of bad behavior? I know. I, I, listen, I've heard it all the time, but I tell people nobody grows out of sin. It's not like a pair of jeans. See, these shirts are getting kind of tight. I'm growing out of, no, you know, you grow into sin. But again, we are our brother's keeper, and probably respectfully, you can, you know, when service is over or whenever you may want to call them and say, listen, X, Y, Z, and you know, try to do your your your, your brotherly duty. But again, the less your children know, the better it is for them. Look what Mrs. White says in. Volume 2, the testimony, page 74. Study please read. While some are continually harassed, afflicted, and in trouble because of their unhappy traits of character, having to war with internal foes and the corruption of their nature, others have not half so much to battle against. Wow. Everybody has to battle. But others don't have half because they were exposed. They indulged. They form habits that are worse than Fort Knox. Okay, I see Sister. Um... You know, I'm really encouraged with this because I hear L2 singing songs that I never taught him. Come to realize when his dad pick him up, he just turn the radio on and whatever is playing on the radio plays. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, he learns them. Mm -hmm. So now I've decided that I'm taking him to school and taking him home. Amen. Even when I have to work, I leave, mm -hmm. go get him. And, you know, it can be a little tricky, but we have to do what we have to do. Amen. There are songs that comes in my head sometimes with that I wish I did not learn. I, I'm telling you, man. And because of that, I have to be so watchful yes. as to protect him from mm -hmm. certain things because I know the repercussions of it. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. 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 And that is why, you know, man, it is such a privilege and a blessing to have Christian parents. It, 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 it is, and it's only when we get to heaven, those kids will realize what they owe to their mothers and their fathers. I'm telling you, man, half the things I'm dealing with right now, I was just, it's in, our home was a very unique home, Ella. They never opposed, 
They never defend. <laughs> you, just, you just be you. And so half my battles right now that I'm fighting were things that I was exposed to. And by the grace of God, I'm trying to shield my kids from an experience as the best teacher. You're not right. If a man goes up, go out there and get it, I don't need to go out there and, and practice it. It's by his life alone or to warn me. Isn't that right? <laughs> All right, go ahead, sir. And we have one more. Uh, um, Pastor, I remember also um, when I was growing up, my grandmother, mm -hmm. I, grew, I grew with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. She smoked. My grandfather smoked. Mm -hmm. My great-grandfather smoked. And my auntie smoked. Everybody smoked. Mm -hmm. And I decided I would never be a smoker. Mm -hmm. And I don't be a smoker. <clears throat> Amen. So what I'm saying, brethren, is that you don't have to follow your parents like you don't have doing to bad, mm -hmm. you don't have to do it god expect us to live otherwise all right hold on we had um our ella mongo right here go ahead sir. Mm -hmm. yes i'm confined because i'm addicted mm -hmm. watching tv movies mm -hmm. all of the movies you watch now is not good no the majority of them mm -hmm. and i find myself wanting to watch these movies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think it has a step on me and definitely Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, we are told it is a natural law of nature. The mind gradually adapts itself to the theme it is left to dwell upon. By beholding, you become changed. And so I tell people this. If you can't handle the cable, you need to cut it off. Amen. Your salvation is that. Because you're going to have to meet these things. Go ahead, Arm. Um, you, you know, the, my question, Pastor, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, how do you, you we, we, we talk about the fact that, you know, by beholding you becomes change and shielding your kids mm -hmm. from certain things. And how do you shield a child from things that you know that is bad when they have a the propensity to uh, that, 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 that natural desire to go after mm -hmm. in, in, in these things, you know? And you know, I, I have I I'm gonna be honest with you. I have a child who you know, at times you speak to her about things. That's the, that's, this is the 21st century, Dad. This, that was the old days. <laughs> you, know, you know, how do you, how do you deal with this? Because right now, I, I'm telling the truth. It, I, it, 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 it perplexes me, and I'm, I'm serious. I, 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 I am, I'm, 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 I'm bewildered. I'm perplexed. You know, you know how do you... You know, try, try to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Di redirect them, and mm -hmm. yet because I said they ha they, they they have this desire mm -hmm. to do these things because mm -hmm. yes, we talk about environment. Mm -hmm. You know, nature's forms and uh, uh, them and and God can transform them, but the world mm -hmm. you, you know inform them, mm -hmm. but they are informed by the world mm -hmm. and by that inf uh, by that information. You know. Uh, God bless those who have the privilege and the opportunity and the and the resources to to send to yeah, in Christian school. My child started out with Christian school, and let me tell you something. I think that was the biggest mistake that I make. I'm gonna be honest with you. That was the biggest mistake that I make. My child mm -hmm. started out. My my boy started out at Western College Prep School. Right, and they go and when they when my kids go in, the first time my son going to public school is when they come to America, mm -hmm. right? My daughter, she started out with in Christian Academy down here in, 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 at Summit, and let me tell you something, Pastor, the things that she come home with that not even a dog, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I, I'm saying to her, how do you redo these things, you know? And listen, and you're right. I mean, unfortunately, you know, in, in most of our institutions, there are always two streams. And again, as parents, we can do our best. But it comes back down to the matter of the will. The, the child has their will. And um, they have the right to exercise as they choose. No, we can do the best we can. I mean, God was the most perfect. God was the perfect parent. And look at his children. Yes. Adam and Eve disobeyed him. Yes. So as sometimes as parents, we can't beat up ourselves too hard because, again, they do have a choice. And, 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 but I, I believe through much prayer, through talking to them, you know, relationship, um, let them know, listen, your salvation is at stake. 
And sometimes, you know, as, as, as West Indians, we tend to, we're very heavy hand. That ain't working anymore. That ain't going to work. That broomstick ain't going to do anything. But drive fair in those kids. I'm saying. Yeah. No, no, no. No. I abandon the concept. I just pray and talk and live. But you have to. You, you, you can't give up much prayer and, and, and claim the promises. But again, um, you, you know what I've learned? I've learned this. When a company is about to, when you're about to purchase a car, the thing that entices you is not the liabilities, but the what? The benefits. You would buy a Hyundai. Why? 100,000 miles, bumper to bumper. So I think, you know, we need to do, I mean, show our kids the benefits of heaven or Jesus. And do what we can and no, don't stop praying for them. All is not lost. The him that is joined to all living there is hope. I'd rather be a, better to be a living dog than a dead lion, the Bible says, right? So there's hope, there's hope, but don't give up on them. And again, even in our schools, I would say be proactive. If we see things, if you see, see something, say something. Challenge your principals and your teachers. Hold them accountable. You are a Christian. We're paying our tuition. We expect to get high class service. But sometimes we're just nonchalant and we say, well, time will take care of it. And then sometimes times don't. Right? Go ahead, Elawu. Okay, go ahead, Elawu. He needs a mic. We can't give up. Mm -hmm. You're right. The, the, the thing is that when, when our children behave um, indifferently, we need to pray mm -hmm. that God will put in our minds mm -hmm. the right things to say. Mm -hmm. Ask God to give you a, a scripture, mm -hmm. you know, a passage of scripture, mm -hmm. and bring the thing to your mind mm -hmm. that will convert that child. Mm -hmm. And God will willingly give it to you as long as you pray for it. Amen. Go ahead, sir. He needs a mind. Go ahead, he needs a mind. I don't want to prolong it, but... Go ahead. The, the parents... The parents are at fault. Because mm -hmm. I went to a, a social event this past Sunday. Mm -hmm. Assembly minutes. And I was shocked to, to see what I saw. I was the only one, I guess, didn't get up to dance. Mm -hmm. The leaders... And parents dancing with son. And they're doing all the kind of shuffle and the music. Mm -hmm. When they were playing the music, I said, there's no way Acreage would allow this music to go on in any social event. I mean, I'm, I, 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 I mean, I sat right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not the parents, it's not the children alone. Mm -hmm. The children are learning from, from the parents. Because mm -hmm. I saw it. I saw the thing, man, mm -hmm. uh, and the rhythm and the beat. <laughs> if mm. you can't control your feet, mercy, you're, you're, you're beating our soul. Get mm. ready to get up and dance. <laughs> and that's exactly that was the environment. Mm. That was the environment, sir. Yeah. And when uh, when you see young people with long earrings, you, you find the excuse made. Well, you know. What do you want them to do? Do you, want them to go, you, do you want them to go out there and sell ganja and sell drugs? So what if they're dressed like that? But the church is honoring them for doing well in church as a leader. And they're mm -hmm. out there partying mm -hmm. with the public can see, which I'm a public mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. I see it. Mm -hmm. I said shame mm -hmm. on, the, on that group. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, so we can't just point our fingers totally at the children. Mm -hmm. They learn it from their parents. Mm -hmm. Point noted. All right, Ella Woodburn, go ahead. And we, have to, we, have to, we have to continue with, with our lesson. Go ahead, sir. Ella Woodburn has had his hand up. Go ahead. I went to Summit Church mm -hmm. uh, last Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And what I saw at the church, I was just surprised. Mm. Because there was, I don't know if it's her daughter or what, but it was a child with an adult. They had like a, 
MV program for the for the prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. And this woman goes up there and was dancing with the daughter, singing and dancing. Mm. I said, that there was a lady sitting beside me. I said, when they start doing something like that, she said, a few months ago, you know, I was shocked. Mm. And the, the, the thing is, if you should go from this church, I don't know where I would go. <laughs> I don't know which church I would go to because just all of, all of them seem to have the same behavior. Mercy. Mercy. Yes, sir. We continue to pray for our churches. Our question number six now. Thank you, Ella Woodbine. Number six now says now. Now, so we know there's a sin issue. We got to get rid of it. There's a deadline. Question number seven, six now says now. What is the name of the plan that God has instituted to rescue man from his sin issue? There's a plan. All is not lost. What is that plan? Revelation chapter 7, verse 10. The Bible says now, And he cried with a loud voice, saying what? Salvation, Salvation to our God, which doth what? Sitteth upon the throne, and unto the what? So salvation is from our God, and also the Lamb. So the plan that God has to rescue us from our sin issue is salvation. Yes. So if we plan to stand in, it, in the crisis with, um, without sin, it is salvation that's going to do the job. Isn't that right? Um, First Thessalonians 5, 9, Paul says now, For God hath not appointed us to what? Wrath, but to obtain what? Salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not in your handout, but this is just on the screen, right? Paul says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but we have an appointment with what? Now, when a person has an appointment, tell me some things that makes an appointment. When you think of an appointment, what are some things that, that you think about? Okay, you need a time. You have to have a time. So one o'clock, what else? You need a date. Place. What else? Hour. Hour. So, when you think of salvation and appointment, you must think that God has ordained for each person to have an appointment with salvation. It may, it may be different as we grow, but each one of us, God has appointed us to have an appointment with salvation. So he has the plan of salvation to really get sin out of our lives, right? And this plan, we oftentimes call a bridge over troubled waters. A bridge over troubled waters, somebody says, right? So God has appointed us salvation. Now, question number seven now says, now what will inevitably come to every man's house someday? Luke chapter 19, verse 9. Zacchaeus was a crook. He was an unfair person. He was a very small man, and one day he heard Christ was passing by, and he went up into a sycamore tree, or a fig tree. And the Bible says now, as Christ, as Christ passed by, the Bible says in Luke 19, verse 9, and Jesus said unto him, this what? This day. This day. This day Salvation has come to what? In his house. Now, what is Zacchaeus to say? You know what? That's not, that's not my time. Maybe he would have missed it. So God in his goodness hath appointed a time where each one of us would have a rendezvous with salvation. It is a wonderful God. He has, even before we were born, God etched it in our lives that on this particular date, you will have an encounter with salvation. Right? Revelation 3.20, Paul says, not Paul, John says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. So God has appointed salvation to come to every man's house. Salvation. Now, when I was in school, I had, I never did like biology. Um, but we had to dissect. Now, we weren't privileged to have human beings, and so we, we did the next best thing we could. We'd get a bullfrog, yes, sir. yeah? Or we'd get a bird. I remember we, we had to dissect. We had to dissect a pigeon, yeah? And we had to look at the parts and label. So we're going to dissect salvation. We'll we break it apart. What is it? What, what, 
what comprises it? How does it work? What, what's the heartbeat of it? What's the hub of it? Because if, if this is what's going to get sin of our lives, how does it work? Now, when we think of salvation, salvation, when you dissect it, when it's dissected, it has three parts. How many parts? Three. And you ought to know them and their order. God is a God of order. When you think of salvation, that is the remedy for sin. The first phase is what we call just. We know these justification, right? We know these things. Justification. That's the first part of salvation. Romans 3.24. Paul says now, how is justification accomplished? Paul says in Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So we learn two things. It is free. Now, it, not, I wouldn't say free because it costs somebody something. Right? But it doesn't cost us anything in, in, in terms of monetary value. It is free and it comes through Jesus Christ. That is what justification is, right? Now, justification in your handouts says, now note, it is the deliverance from the penalty of what? Sin. sin. What is the penalty of sin? Death. Death, right? That's the wages of sin, right? And when all of us work, we expect to get paid. And somebody said if paid, if sin paid up front, we wouldn't sin so often. <laughs> For every time you see somebody drop dead, oh, no. But because, you know, sin, you know, we, we, sin pays, you know, a couple years in advance, so we add up and that's not good. Note, when God justifies a repentant sinner, he figuratively places the atonement provided by Christ, that the righteousness of Christ, to, to his credit, on the books of heaven, and the sinner stands before God as if he had never sinned. Amen. That is an instantaneous work. Once you give your heart to Jesus, you accept this gift, you are justified, you are covered. Amen. Now is that man ready for heaven? Yes. You sure? Let me ask a question. Put it this way now. So Dennis, no. so Dennis, you do the laundry in the house. When you wash Brother Dennis's shirt, is it clean? Is it ready, for, ready to be worn? Why? It has to be iron. God has to, you have to iron out the wrinkles. Now, um, all justification does, it puts man on the highway to heaven. But it doesn't give him any power. <laughs> he needs something to push him now, to propel him. He's on the right highway now, praise God. He needs some power. And this now is the second phase of salvation now. It is called sanctification. Now again, if we plan to be, live in the sight of God without a mediator, it is through sanctification. It is not instantaneous. It is strong battles with self. And it is accomplished through, 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 through several agencies. But the most primary agency, how God sanctifies us, John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy thy word is truth we are being sanctified sanctified paul says in first corinthians 15 31 he says i protest by your rejoicing which i have in christ jesus our lord i die and that's what it is sanctification is a daily thing it's a daily every day you're gonna have to rise and die daily flat line <laughs> and you as, as someone once said if you go to a funeral and you see a dead man in a coffin and you slap that dead man and he slaps you back that man ain't dead <laughs> but he's alive so it is a daily thing somebody say a minutely thing moment by moment right so then it's, please read this live sketches for me please Paul's sanctification was a constant conflict with self. Said he, I die daily. His will and his desires every day conflicted with duty and the will of God. Instead of following inclination, he did the will of God, however unpleasant and crucifying to his nature. So, what, so what's the fight in sanctification? What's the battle? It's in the paragraph. What's the battle? Exactly. Your, your desires... And your will, they have a conflict with what? With the will of God. So it's a battle. And if in a battle, somebody's going to have to die. So it has to be self. And every day, that's what Ellen White says, 
consecrate yourself to the Lord in the morning. Let this be your very first work. Take me, Lord, holy thine. I lay all my plans at your feet to be given up or carried out as providence may allot it. So this is a daily thing, right? And through sanctification, and there's hope. Look what she says, not in your handout, but in desire of ages. She says now, Sinful thoughts are put away. Uh -huh. Evil deeds are renounced. Uh -huh. Love, humility, and peace take the place of anger, uh -huh. envy, and strife. Joy takes the place of sadness, and the countenance reflects the light of heaven. Uh -huh. No one sees the hand that lifts the burden, or beholds the light descend from the courts above. The blessing comes when by faith the soul surrenders itself to God. Then that power which no human eye can see creates a new being in the image of God. Exactly. And again, sanctification is not an instantaneous work. It is a work of a life. And go ahead, Ella Dennis. Um, I was looking at that the other day, mm -hmm. and I came up with this. Um, when a person goes to their bed, mm -hmm. uh, and they wake in the, when they go to their bed, mm -hmm. the, the cells are, are revived, the cells are, are strengthened, they are more alert, they are more alive when, mm -hmm. they, are, when they are weak. Mm -hmm. That's why you feel better in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, what now, the desires that um, are, are, are our tendencies uh, and our desires are more peak. Mm -hmm. They're more up there mm -hmm. um, because we just awake. Mm -hmm. So what happened? We need to sanctify ourselves mm -hmm. uh, when we get up in the morning mm -hmm. so that God can put these emotions under control mm -hmm. so that we'll be able to go through the day. Amen. Um, well said. Well said, sir. And the last now, the last phase of it is now what we call glorification. And we look forward to this blessed, blessed God, right? Uh, it's a process, right? Glorification, right, is a when you dissect salvation. So this is the remedy for sin. This is it, brothers and sisters. And if we plan to be in a position that Christ was before the crisis, we're going to have to go through these phases. Justification, sanctification, and glorification. Now, Romans 5, 21, 5, 2, Paul says, By whom we also have access by faith into, his, into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope, in the hope, the context, in hope of the what? Glory of God. Now, this is a reality now. If we plan to experience glorification, we must have sanctification. And if we plan to be sanctified, we must be justified. God will never glorify a man who has not been sanctified. And you can't be sanctified until you're justified. Order is heaven's first law. Now, what the devil has done in apostate Protestantism now, they don't even talk about sanctification. It is this. Once saved, never lost. And this is being brought into our churches. So, this is the remedy for sin. And I want to say this. This must be accomplished before the crisis hits. Amen. Because next week, God's willing now, we're going to move when the crisis hits now, probation closes. That's it. So if we're going to experience salvation, it must be done now. Because once Michael stands up, ain't nobody getting justified. And if you're not justified, if you skip Math 101, you can't get to 102. You see why it's important, right? Now, some may say, well, preacher, I see what you're saying. Uh, one, two, three. Is it easy? No, no, no. Look what she says now in my, my life today. She says, Christ has given us no assurance that to attain perfection of character is an easy matter. This, you're going to have to fight, wrestle, fast, pray, cut off, pluck out, rend, Radical amputation without anesthesia. Serious be the price it may if you plan to really be saved. She says as we close now, let none say, I cannot remedy the defects of my character. Don't ever come to that point. Why? If you come to this decision, you will certainly fail of obtaining everlasting life.
there's life, there is, there is hope. And there is hope in Jesus for you. Amen? Amen. Praise God.